So let's move on to our next speakers. Um, it's Marina Moore and Priya Wadwa. I'm going to talk about software supply chain integrity with SigStore. Please uh, take it away. Awesome. Uh, Marina, are you ready? Okay, cool. Let me uh, share my screen. <laughs> okay, great. Welcome everyone to Software Supply Chain Integrity with SigStore. Uh, let's just jump right in. So hi everyone, I'm Marina. I'm a PhD student at NYU researching secure software updates and um, supply chain security more generally. I'm a, I'm a maintainer of the TUF project, the update framework TUF, as well as um, Uptain, which is the automotive variant of TUF. And I do work in various other um, open source supply chain projects, including um, SigStore and Notary and um, various other projects. And I'm Priya. I'm a software engineer on the Google open source security team. I work on open source projects like SigStore and Tekton. In the past, I've worked on open source Kubernetes developer tools like Minikube and Scaffold. Fun fact, I like to play the drums, but it's probably not so fun for the people I live with. <laughs> All right, so why do we need SigStore? So um, as, as everyone who's here probably is aware that, that we, have, we, have, we as a community have a problem with um, supply chain security. And so the, what SigStore is looking to do is looking to find a way to securely distribute all the pieces involved in that, which includes the software itself, as well as things like SBOMs and other information that we need securely distributed to people. The way it does this is it provides a set of um, tools and services for easy code signing and verification. Um, it's, it's, it's all backed by a transparency log that is completely public and auditable and stores um, all of the metadata in a public place so that you can make sure that nothing's been changed. Um, entities in SigStore can sign and publish artifacts, publish signatures, and monitor logs um, in this transparency log. Cool. So we're going to talk in detail a little bit about the tools and services that SigStore offers. So I'm going to start with Cosign. So we started Cosign a few months ago because there wasn't a really easy way to sign container images. And that's kind of how Cosign started um, as a project to automate signing containers from beginning to end. So you can kind of see in the terminal screen grab on the slide that you can use Cosign to generate a public private key pair. You can use it to sign your image with that private key pair and you can verify your image with the associated public key as well. And Cosign actually has support for signing with different methods. You can use a cloud KMS system um, if you have one available or even hardware like a YubiKey. Um, so I mentioned that Cosign was started um, as a project to sign container images, but you can actually use it to sign a lot more. We've added built-in support for other kinds of software in recent months like WASA modules and Intoto attestations. So in the example on the slide, um, we're actually just signing a regular file. Uh, with Cosign, you can upload that file to an OCI registry and then sign it just as you would a container image that lives in your OCI registry as well. And that signature is stored alongside the image in the registry as well. So Cosign actually uh, announced a 1.0 release a few weeks ago, so it's ready to be used. And yeah, definitely check it out for anything you need to sign. So the next tool in the SigStore ecosystem is called Record, which is the public transparency log. Um, it's, you know, it's a transparency log, so it's an immutable and tamper-resistant log um, in which users can sign, um, can store signed metadata, sorry. Um, and there's a, a tool, the Record CLI, which makes it easy to query anything that's been uploaded to the log, as well as append new metadata entries to this log. One of the cool features about Record is that it also provides by default, a time stamping service, which uses the um, RFC 3161 um, time stamping service um, standard and to, to automatically time stamp anything that's uploaded to the log. So that you can make sure not only that the thing that's uploaded that you're you know, verifying is the thing that was uploaded to the log, you can ensure some timeliness properties about the things that are included in the log. 
And the, the final like kind of core SIG store tool is Fulcio, which is a free root CA that uses um, OICD email address verification to kind of simplify developer key management. So instead of um, individual developers or anyone who's signing metadata or images, having to um, store and manage um, private keys and make sure that they stay safe forever, what Fulcio does is it allows um, users to use their existing OICD supported email addresses to, um, to verify their identity. And then Fulcio issues them a short-lived certificate, which they can use right away to sign that, that metadata or information. And then um, and the certificate is short-lived, so the developer doesn't have, or user in general, doesn't have to securely store it or maintain it over time. Oh, and everything is published to Rico for um, timeliness and auditability so that users can make sure that the certificate was valid within the window in which it was used. So, next slide. Oh, I think I skipped one, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick demo now to kind of show how Cosign, Recor, and Fulcio can all work together to make signing really easy. Let me figure out how to share my terminal. Okay, where is it? There it is. Okay, so the first thing I need is just a piece of software that I wanna sign. So I already built just like a really simple Docker image and pushed it to my own registry. And so I wanna sign it and I'm gonna use Cosign. Um, and it's pretty easy. It's just the cosine sign command and then the name of the image. So at this point, I could pass in like a private key or a reference to a KMS system for signing, but I'm going to take advantage of cosine's integration with Recor and Fulcio um, and request a certificate instead. So just run cosine sign and then the name of the image and it will redirect me to this OADC flow, which I realize maybe now people can't see. See. Um, okay, cool. Redirected to this OIDC flow. So, this is how I'm going to authenticate my identity and prove that I am myself. So, I'm going to log in with my own personal email account. And that's pretty much all I have to do. If we go back to the terminal, we should see that Cosin was able to sign this image for me. So the way that it did it was it generated an ephemeral public private key pair, which is just stored in memory and will eventually be thrown away and requested a certificate from Fulcio. So this certificate is a short lived certificate. Like Marina mentioned, it's only valid for about 20 minutes and it'll include information like the email address I use to authenticate and the public key that we'll use for verification later. Uh, so Cosign also added an entry into the record transparency log um, to, keep, to keep track of the signature and finally push the entire signature to my registry where it'll live alongside my image. So as a developer, it was that easy to sign my image um, and kind of like tie it back to my identity. But as a user, um, how do I verify that this image actually came from Korea? Um, so again, it's pretty easy. We just run a cosine verify command and the name of the image and cosine should just do everything for us. Um, so this is pretty nice. So the first thing it does is uh, verify that the signature um, is valid against the certificate. Um, the next thing it does is make sure that an entry was put into the transparency log when the signature was signed and that it was during the window of validity for the certificate. Um, and finally, make sure that the certificate came from the trusted root CA, which in this case is the full CO root CA. And then there's a little bit more information, like who signed the image, it was me, um, and the actual payload that the signature covers. So we have the name of the image in there and the digest of the image itself. Um, so as a user, if I wanted um, to find this information in the record transparency log, I could use this log index that was provided when Cosine did the signing. So we can use the record CLI command to get this log index. Um, and in here we have the base 64 encoded signature. We have the certificate that was issued, um, the, the SHA-256 digest over the payload. Um, and if for some reason I've lost this log index, I can also search the entire transparency log by email and I can find everything that I've ever signed and add this to the log, which is a bunch of stuff. But the image that we just signed is somewhere in there. Go back to the presentation.
Okay, cool. Nice. My slide is not changing. Sorry, everyone. Can I have the presentation window in a different? Yeah. Right. The, the risk of doing things live. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why my presentation is tapping out. Hmm. If, if Marina has a copy, we can switch over her display. Oh yeah, Marina, if you can present actually. Oh yeah, yeah, I will get that pulled up. should see a share screen button on the bottom. Yeah, I have to get the presentation up. Um, okay, cool. Can everyone see that? Yes. Awesome. All right, here. Thanks so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. And, and thanks for being yeah. flexible. <laughs> these things work. Okay, cool. So this diagram basically covers um, everything I just went through in the demo, um, but in more of a diagram kind of way. So on the left side, we have how developers might interact with the six store ecosystem. And on the right side, we, have, uh, we should see how end users might interact with it. So on the left side, we have developers um, who will want to publish some sort of signed artifact and they'll request a certificate from the full CO certificate authority and authenticate their ID with OIDC um, and by logging in with their email. Um, full CO will pro uh, provide a signature and a certificate which developers can store in the report transparency log. Uh, on the other side, we have end users who are trying to verify that a signed artifact came um, is valid. And so they can look up the signature in the report transparency log, also find the certificate and make sure it's valid. Um, and they can also ensure that the certificate came from a trusted root certificate authority, which again, in this case, would be the full CO certificate authority. All right, so now we're going to talk about a few integrations of the six store ecosystem with some other projects in the supply chain um, security space. So first, I'm going to talk for a minute about the update framework, or TAF, which is a framework for secure software updates that uses metadata about artifacts to, to sign metadata about artifacts to prevent node attacks on software update system. It's based on this principle of being compromise resilient, which means so that if any single developer key or repository is compromised, I'm not sorry, or repository, any, but if any single piece of the system is compromised, then it has both me methods to recover from these compromises, as well as, um, you know, redundancies to ensure that single points of failure don't lead to um, people installing malware or other um, bad software. So um, the, the first way that Sixtra uses the TUF project is to do what we call the TUF root of trust. Uh, which is kind of the root of trust that underlies a lot of these other pieces of the six store ecosystem. So the way this works is we held this offline ceremony where we generated some offline keys and we used them to sign metadata that includes the, pub the um, public keys for various um, parts of the six store ecosystem. And this includes the full CO root CA's um, root certificate, as well as the, the um, keys used to sign things in the record log. And so this allows for both um, revocation of any of those pieces of the six year ecosystem if anything goes wrong and kind of creates an underlying um, trust level so that um, it creates it makes it easier to kind of chain trust to different pieces if you start with this, this root of trust um, in these offline keys. The next thing I want to talk about is Intoto, which is a framework for um, software supply chain security more generally. It's based on this idea where you verify every single step in the supply chain and you ensure that the correct person did that step. Um, it was done in the correct order and all the steps you expected to happen were all done before the, um, the software was, was delivered. And so here we have an example of an Intoto attestation for um, a, a GitHub project basically that shows that Priya authored this um, commit to the awesome project and I reviewed this commit 
and we both attest that we did um, those different steps and then we can pass it to the next stage in the supply chain and you, know, you build up this chain of attestations to show that you know you have this which led to this artifact and then that artifact led to the next one in the chain. So Rickor in currently includes support for both CAF and in Toto types so that any kind of metadata that is generated for, for either of these two projects can then be stored in the transparency log to get some extra um, security properties and um, auditability on these different metadata pieces. There's also a couple of in-progress integrations. Um, first of all, having Cosign generate tough metadata automatically so that you can have kind of all these things just automatically work um, together, as well as kind of a reverse integration of um, integrating Fulcio back into Tough to create um, easier developer key management for the Tough project itself um, using the, the Fulcio root CA instead of requiring developers to generate and secure um, public private key pairs. Not too far. Go back. Um, no, way too far. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> All good. <laughs> Slides are hard today. Um, okay, cool. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how we've been integrating Sigster with the Tekton project. So for those of you who may not know, Tekton is an open source CICD platform on Kubernetes. Um, and it basically just lets you run your build pipelines on Kubernetes itself, um, doing things like building images, storing them somewhere. Um, anything you normally do with a CI/CD platform. And I've been working on Tekton Chains recently, which is the supply chain security manager for Tekton. So the idea behind Chains is that it runs alongside your Tekton pipeline. It basically observes your pipelines and um, provides any sort of supply chain security you might need for them. So this includes signing artifacts that are built in your pipeline uh, with Cosign. Um, and also includes adding um, entries of the, for these signatures to the record transparency log. It can request certificates from Fulcio, and it can also create comprehensive build provenance for your pipeline with Intoto attestations and store those attestations in record as well. So what does this look like in practice? Like what is something, that, uh, what can you actually do when something has been signed with chains? So under the hood, we're using all six search tools. Um, so it's nice because we're already familiar with them. And this is where it gets a little bit meta because the most recent uh, Tekton change release was actually signed by Chains itself. So we can use the most recent release image kind of as an example to show how users can interact with it. Um, so the first thing that users can do with this image is they can verify it against the Tekton public key, which just lives as a file in our GitHub repo for reference. And so you can run cosend verified, pass in the public key and the image name, and you get the same verification that we saw earlier in the demo. Um, so the verification also includes the SHA-256 digest, which I kind of put in bold on the slide. Um, and if we want to get build provenance for this image, we can use the recourse CLI command to get some more information. Um, so if we go to the next slide. Um, you can actually query the transparency log for build provenance with the digest of the image itself. So you can run a recourse CLI search and then the digest and it'll spit out all of the matching uh, entries in the log and you can get some more information from that entry specifically and it'll print out the entire in toto as build provenance for um, the build of that image itself. So I had to cut out a lot of information from this provenance so that it would fit on the slide, but it includes things like the name of the image, the digest, um, the parameters would be any environment variables that were set during the build, and the recipe is a list of steps, and each step corresponds to a container that was run in the build. So in the recipe, you can see the list of containers that were run, um, the order they were run in, and what command or script um, it was passed into each container. So you can really get a sense of how this image was built um, in its entirety. All right, so um, some so future steps for Sigstor. So Cosign, one of the Sigstor tools, already had its 1.0 release, but Recore and Fulcio, um, those are still upcoming. They're coming up pretty soon. Um, some other upcoming okay, projects are using are issuing certs to other nested Fulcio in instances so that you can have kind of a local instance of Fulcio based on that same root of trust, as well as integrations with more tooling, any, any other tooling in this um, 
secure software supply chain ecosystem. If you'd like to get involved, here's some links to the website and the Slack. It's a, it's a super open and welcoming community in, in my experience. So feel free to come with questions or ideas or anything, as well as there's a weekly community meeting, which you can get info on from the website. Thank you. And feel free to email us. And I think we have some questions in the Q&A that I will look at right now. Very cool. Yeah, let's see what's up. Um, so how do you know how to trust a TSA that's used? So the, um, the TSA is, is um, based on that same um, Recor root of trust key. So it's, it's signed by Recor when it's uploaded to the transparency log. Um, so you can trust it like as much as, as that. Um, I think similar for the next question of how you trust um, the cosign ecosystem. I think um, knowing who exactly to trust to sign it is um, in some ways an individual um, question of like the policy of the consumer of the software, but um, you, you can get information about it from, from the ecosystem to then make that decision. Okay, so um, you can take any of these two. See, I understand the build containers are signed by Cosign. Yeah, you can use Cosign to sign um, containers that you've built and already pushed to a registry. Uh, what infrastructure is this running on? I think right now, like the production report full CO are running as deployments on Kubernetes. At least the last time I checked, they were. <laughs> Okay, here's one. What OS and software platforms um, trust the full CA root? Is it audited against the same standards as other CAs? Um, like, like we said in the previous slide, it's still um, just before, it's still like up, waiting for the 1.0 release. So I don't think it's currently um, put into any OS or software platforms. That would be kind of a, a ne definitely a next step for the project as it is in a 1.0 release and is ready for um, large scale use in this. Yeah. Uh, I see, is Cosign replacing Notary or Signy? Sig and why? I don't know how to say it. Um, no, I think they're separate projects uh, with their own kind of things that they do. It's definitely not a replacement. Yeah, I think they, they kind of approach the problem I think, from, from different angles and, and different pieces. I think Notary does a lot of the registry storage um, pieces, which are super important. And then um, Sigster does the kind of the transparency log pieces a little bit differently. So they just kind of approach it in, in slightly different ways. Um, okay. All right. All right. This is great. Thank you so very, very much. Do we have any any parting shots, last words, or Parthian shots? <laughs> Just thank you all for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. And definitely, um, if you're interested in the project, come to a community meeting or ping us on Slack. Excellent. That's a great way to, to uh, wrap up that. So thank you again very much, uh, Priya, Marina. Thank you so very, very much.